Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Live at the Arc Arena. We have a great matchup for you today as the Baruch Bearcats, men, are going against the Megard Ever College. Alongside with me is Joe Stozer. I'm Jamal Chapman, and today you have a great matchup. How are you doing today, Joe? I'm doing good, Jamal. Uh, we just saw a great basketball game. Uh, the women, Baruch Cat, Bearcats women, uh, Big time victory over the women of Medgar Evers. Uh, so they're really playing on a high note. But time for some good late afternoon basketball here at the Arc. And Medgar Evers comes in with uh, an interesting Maurice Swabi averaging 20.4 points per game. Bashir Kamara averaging 5.9 rebounds per game. Um, so you know, 20.4 speaks a lot. And uh, Medgar Evers beat Baruch earlier in the season. So I look for a really uh, interesting matchup. So many uh, playoff implications on the line, especially for Baruch. And, uh, of course, when we talk about Baruch, Jamal, we talk about uh, Chima Ekebar, who's the preseason All-American. He's Mr. Everything for uh, Baruch. And uh, averaging 17.5 points a game, 9.7 rebounds, also averaging 3.1 assists. He does everything for uh, the Bearcats. And, of course, the Bearcats have an incredible amount of depth. Coach Alisi can choose anybody at any time on the bench and get great production. Um, the guards of Baruch have great upper body strength that um, help themselves, especially on the rebounding end. Uh, we have William Sixsmith, who is a lock and low three point shooter. He's like the JJ Reddick of Baruch. So you, you just have a lot of uh, depth for the Bearcats. And Coach Alisi and staff do a great job uh, in preparation. And uh, they're in a great spot now for uh, making a run in the CUNY playoffs. Definitely the Baruch Bearcats coming. Rank, I mean, at third, at third in the standings in the CUNYAC conference at 10 and four, but an interesting scenario today because if Staten Island lose and Baruch win the next two straight games, they can clinch second place because they have the tiebreaker over Staten Island. And currently in progress is a game that the last game that Staten Island is playing on the season. Lehman leads them by two points, 81 to 79, with two minutes and nine seconds remaining in that game. So. If the Brook Bearcats want to sneak into second, if, they, if Staten Island loses today, tonight will be today will be a very good game, very important game for them to win tonight, today. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's all it's all coming down to uh, you know you have to win out on the court, and uh, anything can happen. And we talked about it in the women's game that once a team gets hot this time of the year, they can make a lot of things happen. Forgetting about what the one loss. Uh, record is, but uh, on the Baruch side, I'll look for Andre Harris. Uh, compare him to Grant Hill. He's a long, lean body. Does a lot of things for Baruch. Um, the Baruch has formidable guards that uh, you know that can do a lot, a lot of things for uh, Coach Alisi. Uh, but again, Coach Alisi has players who can contribute in every department. Just a very large amount of depth uh, that a lot of teams would love to have. No, definitely. We took on about 15 players on the roster at any given point. You know, he definitely can set up a lot of different players to go in and check into the game and give them a lot of production. But it's going to be a very important game for the Bearcats to win right now as currently it's one minute remaining, no, sorry, excuse me, 49 seconds and Lehman still leads by two. So if the Bearcats win an opportunity at that second seed, second seed if Staten Island loses, to, loses today, the Bearcats would have to win out the rest of the way. It's also uh, senior day for uh, the men's uh, Bearcats. And, uh, you know, I look out on the court and I see Tamar Farid. I see Coach Alisi. Um, these are Brian McMahon. I see these guys. I remember when they played here. Seeing that those guys play here is going to be good for those seniors to definitely step out on the court and be honored. Today we today we have Dwayne Brody and Chima Ekekobar, two seniors who will be recognized today. 
Chima, uh, boy, it's going to be sad to see him go. Boy, he's the all-time leading scorer for the Bearcats. And it's just an incredible young man off the court. Talk about leading scorer. He comes in with today's game with 1,901 points. Superb player. Definitely is. And definitely the Brook. Brook, during his time here, has definitely appreciated all he's been able to contribute. And first to be honored is Dwayne Brighty. Yeah. Very good player off the bench for the Bearcats. Carl Amago has uh, come out to half court. Carl was a standout player here for the Bearcats. He's currently the head coach, men's basketball, Queensboro Community College. Um, you know, a real star in the making from the coaching uh, fraternity. By the way, Carl helped my 3-0 and record in the alumni game this year as he spearheaded a big late comeback. So shout out to you, Carl. Led you to that 3-0 and record of yours. You're going to go for 4-0 next year? I, I hope to. Uh, I'm recruiting heavily to make sure some of the alumni come back that could help my cause. What are some players you think you want to want, would you want on your squad next year? Well, I always want Tama Farid because he's my knockdown shooter, George Kunkel, who has the best hands in the land. Uh, I want him to snatch rebounds. Those kind of guys. have team at Kekobar being honored. You can't say enough good things about this student athlete. I mean, he's, he's your LeBron James. He's your guy. He, you know, when he's good, um, I mean, there's no, no limits to uh, how far the Baruch Bearcats men team can go. It, it's really nice when uh, these young student athletes, they're so personable and they're so nice to talk to. Uh, you just It's such a thrill to know them. And uh, what they do in the basketball courts, it's just a total package. And that's been a constant here at Baruch, that um, the young men and young women that uh, have been student athletes are just so um, great off the court and they go on to do some great things in the business world. You know, characters definitely... Something that the Brook Bearcats here, they build their, a lot of their programs off of, and you can see it resonate with the players that they have here, that they have passed through Brook throughout the years. Yeah, shout out to former head coach Ray Rankis, who, you know, just a legendary an icon, but a great man off the court. He's meant so much to so many people um, with his advice and, and his wisdom. And, uh, just a shout out to you, coach Rankers. Be well, you and your family. So now we're going to move, move over to our starting lineup for Megan Everest college. You have starting guard, Dimitri Weeks, freshman from Corona in New York. You have second starting guard, Maurice Swaby the second from Brooklyn, New York, senior. You have the junior from Brooklyn, New York, Justin Sutton. You have a sophomore from the Bronx, Jafet Thomas. And last, you have sophomore from Woodside, New York, John Carlo Bonilla. Assistant coaches Brad Oranger, Kel Kelvin Bigelow, and head coach Brian Negro. Now for your Bearcats. Junior from Brooklyn, New York, Bryler Page. We have a junior from Plainville, New York, number three, William Sixsmith. 
We have freshman from Brooklyn, New York, number, number four, Anthony Gibbs. Junior from Melville, New York, number 15, Andre Harris. And finally, you have senior from Matawan, New Jersey, number 32, Chima Ekekobar. Shout out uh, Jamal to Gary Siano, who is uh, in the stands. Gary, a longtime assistant here at Baruch, he's in charge of the uh, alumni uh, for basketball here. He invites everybody to the annual alumni event. A great, great, great guy, and he's in the stands today. We always want to acknowledge him, and uh, it looks like he's here with his son. Looking for a big game today from the Bearcats. He's definitely here live. And we're about to be underway as the opening tip is on the way. Baruch in their white. And you have the Cougars in the black and yellow. And the tip off is to Baruch. And now we are underway here in the first half. Anthony Gibbs has the ball in the back court looking to set up the offense. Kick it over to Bryler Page on the left wing. Kicks it back up top to Keko Ball. Back over to Page. And he's there. Definitely a lot of chatter from the Baruch Bear. Bearcats, as Chima works his way inside with the layup, it's good. Brew Bearcats, two, Cougars, zero. Yeah. Nine minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first half. One checker ball gets in that close, that's that's in. Put it in the bank. But good patience by Baruch, uh, passing the ball around and uh, freeing up Ekobar. As Swabi kicks it over to Weeks, could not get the shot to fall. And a solid rebound by Anthony Gibbs, who pushed the ball to the front court. Kicks it over to Andre Harris, but cannot corral the pass as it goes out of pounds. And the ball will go back to the Cougars. Yeah, Gibbs a little in too much hurry. He should bring it out. Uh, let's get back into sharing the ball. The openings will come. And now you have the steal by a Keko Bar and Baruch with numbers. It's Byler Page, kicks it back to Andre Harris. And it is good with another layup. The Brew Bearcats now lead by four, 4-0 four with 18 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first half. Andre Harris reminds uh, me of Grand Hill. Long, lean, great body control. And talk about Swabi the second with the layup, the leading score for the Maggot Evers Cougars. So Baruch has to identify Swabi, not let him get going. He's averaging 20. And Keko Bar back over to Browler Page as he kicks it over to Anthony Gibbs on the left wing. Kicks it back over to Browler Page as Page pulls for three from the right wing. Hits back iron, could not get it to fall. But the ball was tipped out by Thomas and it will go back to the Bearcats. Jamal, watch out for the upper body strength of the Baruch guards, Page, um, Gibbs. Uh, that, that's a big advantage because they can go underneath and assist in getting rebounds and also get a lot of uh, N1s. And Anthony Gibbs is able to find Chima inside on the left block and was able to come up with the layup. The Brook Bear Cats now lead by four with 18 minutes remaining in this first half. Once Echobar gets in that close again, it's uh, in the bank. Now Weeks has the ball, kicks it over to Sutton who pulls for three and couldn't get the shot to fall. Andre Harris with the rebound as Anthony Gibbs now slows down the ball, slows down the pace for the offense and gets his ball, get the ball over to the front court. Now Bradley Page has the ball, kicks it over to Gibbs on the right wing who kicks it to the free throw line to where Andre Harris kicks it back to. Now Andre Harris drives inside with the Euro step, kicks it back out to Page who kicks it over to Gibbs who now goes up for the floater, just hits the front of the rim. And Kekobar able to come away with the steal. And now Keko Ball gets the ball. Almost went out of bounds, but over to Harris. And now the Bearcats now have the ball with another offensive possession. Sixsmith hasn't had a touch yet. He's, uh, he's a knockdown shooter. He hasn't gotten a touch yet. Um, we got to see if he's on today. When he's on, you know, that's three ball. And you had a Keko Ball in that last play with the layup. But going back to Sixsmith, it's very important that he gets going early because he's knocking them three point three point ball that just opens up the offense for the rest of the team but Benila coming back for the Cougars with that layup there 
eight to four. The Brook Bear Cats lead with 16 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Yeah, I, I would look to get uh, Six Smith a touch just so he, you know, he he can get into the offense if need be. Now Bradley Page has the ball, kicks it over to Andre Harris over on the left wing. He looks to drive, throws up the shot, cannot get it to fall, but we have a foul. Andre Harris will be going to the line for two shots. One, one thing to watch out for, the great body control that the Baruch Bearcats have. That's a credit to coach, assistant coach Tamar Farid, who does the strength and conditioning. And he puts these guys in a position to really strengthen their core and allow them to do a lot of things. And everybody, just a quick update. Lehman beat Staten Island 83 to 82. And this one is very important for the Bearcats because right now if the Bearcats win two straight games, they have an opportunity to clinch the second seed. And it's very important right now for the Bearcats. This game right now could definitely be pivotal if they need to win one more game in order to clinch second seed. Yeah, Le Lehman's a very tough team this season in CUNY. So is Staten Island. So it's, it's coming down to a very tight finish in CUNY. And the, the Bearcats here played an early game in the season against Staten Island here at home. Couldn't come away with the win, but was able to go on the road and beat Staten Island. So it's important right now for them to play their best and try to come out of here victorious against Megadevers. Baruch is letting Megadevers uh, hang around. It's a cliche and um, they have to be careful. And uh, like I said, it's been, we're at 16, 12 marks. Six Smith really has not uh, been part of the offense. So let's see if he can get a touch at least. Okay, he does. Yeah, he gets a touch there, but, but the Mega Devers Cougars are all on him. As Chima puts up the shot, cannot get it to fall. But you, you said it's important for Six Smith to get some opportunities there, but a credit to the Cougars for sticking to him like glue. Yeah, Cheemer has obviously uh, come out and made some things happen. Now, um, that wasn't really Baruch's defense. That was uh, Medgar Evers turning it over. So, of course, the turnovers by Medgar Evers have to really be few because, uh, you know, I think Baruch has the advantage across the board here in this game. Yes, definitely, as Megan Edwards with four turnovers. As Six Smith pulls for three, could not get it to fall, but Anthony Gibbs flying in for the rebound there as he kicks it over to Bryla Page. Bryla Page pulls with the corner three, able to get that one to rattle in. The score is now 12 to four with 15 minutes and 26 seconds second remain in the, remaining in the first half. The Brew Bearcats lead by eight, and right now in the offensive end, they are playing on all cylinders, shooting well over 50% from the field. It's always good when a complimentary player like Page contributes, especially to three ball. Uh, the, the great thing is, is that, okay, uh, Six Smith uh, had a touch, but that's not really his thing. He's a, a rhythm player. He kind of shot that uh, from a standstill position, and that's not really him. But, okay, so he got the touch, and, and that can only bode well. Uh, right now, 12 to 4. Coach Nigro is just going to tell the uh, team, please do not turn the ball over. You're only down eight, and uh, you want to get in the heads of Baruch, who thinks that, you know, they're at home. Uh, they know what the playoff implications are. They, they do have confidence coming into this game. But at the other side, Medgarev has beat Baruch earlier. So there's a lot of psychology going on right. in these early moments. Definitely the Bearcats enjoy an eight-point lead, and especially on senior day. I know the seniors want to walk out of here victorious. And one senior who's off to a great start is Chima Kekobar with six points and one rebound. But we're back to action as the Cougar Sutton has the ball. Kicks it over to Spalding, who kicks it over to Weeks back. Swabi back over to Manila, who was able to pull up for the three and knock it down. The score is now 12-7. to seven with 15 minutes remaining in the first half. Yeah, Manila really uh, had a chance to set his feet, not really contested to hit that three. And now the Brook Bearcats have the ball, and then he gives, kicks it over to Bob Pedro, kicks it over to Andre Harris, trying to get the pass over to one of the players. Andre Harris lifts his foot and get called for the travel. Good defense by Medgar Evers and forcing uh, Baruch into a turnover. So Baruch has to be careful. 
with the turnover uh, number. And now we have a substitution. George Smith Jr. in for Andre Harris. And now Sutton has the ball for the Cougars as Vanilla now has the ball. Kicks it over to Spalding, back over to Sutton, over to Swabby, the second, who banks in the three pointer. And as quickly as the Brew Brick has had the eight point lead, they now only find themselves up by two. 12 to 10 with 14 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Yeah, you can't let Swabby start to uh, get going. He's averaging 20 coming into the game. As Ryder Page gets that pass inside to Kekobar, could not knock down the shot. And now the, the Cougars are pushing the ball up the court as Sun kicks it over to Manila for the three, and it is good. In three plays, the Cougars come back with three consecutive threes to take the lead against the Brew Bearcats. 13 to 12, the Cougars now lead by one point with 14 seconds, 14 minutes, excuse me, remaining in the first half. Jamal, what 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 just happened in these last couple of moments? is that uh, you just allow the team to get going. And when you allow a team to get going, no matter who they are, you know, that, that could uh, create a comeback. So momentum is really on the side of Medgar Evers now. Let's see how Baru can answer this little run by uh, Medgar Evers. And now Baru comes in at third in the CUNY Act Conference, right behind Staten Island in second. And, and first is Lehman. But most importantly, as we all know, Staten Island has lost t today, and that was their final game. And if Baruch wins in the next two games, they have an opportunity to clutch second place in the CUNYAC Conference. As Chima has the ball inside, he kicks it out the page with the wide open three off the right side of the rim. And Kekabar comes down with the rebound, goes right back up with the layup, and will be going to the line for one more free throw shot. What a great play by Chima on that one. Medgar Evers is going to have to locate uh, Chima at all times. And, they're gonna, you know, firstly, you have to deny him the ball. He gets great position. And then secondly, you're going to have to locate him because he's lurking to get an offensive putback, which he just did in a chance for a three-point play. And right now on that play, Akekobar definitely utilizing his size, able to sky for that rebound and knock down the free throw. The Brubeck has regained the lead. 15 to 13 with 13 minutes and 35 seconds remaining here in the first half. Now Sutton has the ball as he kicks it over to Spalding. As Swabi comes off the screen, able to put up the shot, could not get it to knock down. Now kick a ball with the rebound. Now Jack Sixman has the ball in the front court with Violet Page over the left wing, back up top to kick a ball to the right wing to Jack Sixsmith. Over to William Sixsmith. A kick a ball over to Jack. Right back to Kekko Ball for the corner three by the page. Could not get that one to fall. Sutton comes down with the rebound, and the Cougars are going straight into the front court. As Sutton goes all the way to the rim, could not get the rebound, the layup to fall, but the rebound by Jafet Thomas and is able to go back up and tie this game up. 15 to 15, 12 minutes and 50 seconds remaining here in the first half. Momentum definitely shifting to Medgar Evers. They, they got really in close. Uh, leading to that offensive rebound. No defense by the Bearcats. And now Willie George Smith Jr. able to get the ball over the Bala Page for the corner three, and it's good. 18 to 15. The Brook Bearcats regain the lead, and this game has been back and forth early, here in the early going of the first half. Hey, Page has had two shots that have changed uh, momentum, two three balls. And now Spalding has the ball on the right wing as Sutton is trying to work on Jack Sixsmith. And he looks to go all the way to the rim. But Jack Sixsmith able to poke his hand in there to knock away the ball. But we have a foul on Jack Sixsmith. Foul away from the ball. That's something that Coach Alisi can't be happy about. That was away from the ball. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's just a tough foul. That's nothing near the basket. And now checking in for the Brook Bearcats is Dwayne Bridey. Now Sutton pulls for three, could not get it to fall. We have the rebound by Jones, who kicks it out to Spalding, who looks to drive all the way to the rim. But George Smith there holding his ground, giving up his body, and is able to draw the charge. Well, even though uh, that was a charge, Medgar Evers is really playing aggressive. And, uh, you know, Baruch has got to be careful because, uh, you know, they're going hard now. They have, they have to really defend because Medgar Evers is, is wanting to get to the basket. 
And definitely that spark came from Megan Edwards when they hit those three threes back to back on three consecutive offensive possessions. But the Brook Bearcats now have the ball with George Smith Jr. on the baseline, kicking into Jack Six Smith, who kicks it outside to William Six Smith, but the ball was stolen by Swabby, who kicks it over to Jones, and Jones goes up for the layup, and it is good. 18 to 17 with 11 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first half, the Brook Bearcats lead. Meg Garevis taking advantage of a Baruch turnover. Baruch has got to be careful. Do not turn the ball over. You're keeping Meg Garevis in the game. Now, George Smith Jr. kicks it over to Jack Sixman, who kicks it up top to Six, William Six Smith, who kicks it over to Dwayne Bryden, who stops and pops. Could not get that one shot to fall, but gets his own rebound, and now we have a travel by Dwayne Bridey. The Brook Bearcats lead 18 to 17 with 11 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in this game. The Brook Bearcats need to settle down here at the 11 minute mark of the first half. That was a quick travel whistle. And now Megan Evers has the ball inside into the front court. You have Swabby the second who kicks it over to Jones, who kicks it over to Swabby, but the pass there, a little bit of miscommunication there between Swabby and Jones on that play as they acknowledge that as they come back to get ready on to get set on the defensive end. Yeah, there was uh, there was no passing angle from Jones to Swabby. That's just a, an outright turnover. But 18 to 17, you know, Megar Evans is hanging around. Now we have a substitution with George Smith Jr. going to the bench and Bradley Page checking back into the game. Now Bradley Page gets it over to a kicker ball, and the kicker ball is working on Jones. Kicks the ball over to Six Smith as Bradley Page pulls for the corner of three. Could not get the ball to drop down, but a kicker ball with the rebound, and the Bearcats have a fresh, fresh 30 seconds. And now Jack Six Smith has the ball, and Bradley Page coming off a screen. And now we have an offensive foul with Jack Sixsmith running into Giancarlo Bonilla, and the ball will go back to the Mega Dever Cougars. Yeah, that's another turnover by the Bearcats. So uh, you have an 18 17 game favored Baruch, but uh, once again, an opportunity for Mega Revers to take the lead. It's definitely another opportunity. And this game has just been back and forth so far here in the, in the first half. Now Benila working on Andre Harris, picks up his dribble, has to kick it over to Spaulding, who kicks it over to Sutton. Sutton holding the ball. Now over to Thomas, who kicks it inside to Jones. Now Jones puts up the shot, could not get it to fall. Good contest by a ball. Now Anthony Gibbs has the ball into the front court, looking to work on Beretti. As a ball goes all the way to the rim with the layup from the pass from Anthony Gibbs. Great layup by a ball who now leads all scores with 11 points. Yeah, not much defense, but uh, Meg Revis comes right back to answer the Echobar basket. That was Barrett, that was Barrett from Meg Evers College. Now, the score is 20 to 19 with nine minutes and 25 seconds remaining here in the first half. Gibbs now has the ball, kicks it over to Echo Bar, who pulls for the three, and it is good. Echo Bar has come out here early in this game and is making his presence felt. Now has 14 points and four boards. Benilla now has the ball for the Cougars, who kicks it over to Barrett, who puts up the shot and is able to knock it down. Barrett off the bench has now been able to score four points for the Cougars, but the Bearcats now lead by two with nine minutes and six seconds remaining in the first half. Well, Coach Alicia can't be happy that uh, A, Meg Revers is still hanging around, and B, that Baruch is training baskets now. Uh, Baruch is relying on Echobar to kind of, you know, uh, make things happen. Where are the other four players? Uh, but, it, hey, listen, Echobar, unless defended, he, he's going to continue. Coach Nigro now has to find an answer for Echobar, and he's going to tell his team, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, it looks like Baruch is having problems with anything that Medgar Evers tries to do. And you know, tonight, Akekobar comes in as the leading scorer all time for the Baruch Bearcats with 1,901 points. And right there, 16th on that list, is Coach John Alisi with 1,000 points, not 1,091 points. So Chima definitely coming out today trying to extend his mark. 
and definitely has been making his presence felt with 14 boards and four rebounds in this game. Well, Coach Elise has gone to Villar uh, down as low post player. He's a very interesting player. He's, he's got a lot of uh, potential. He's long. Uh, he's got to work on some post moves down low, and he could be a factor uh, in coming years for the Bearcats. He definitely can, and only coming in as a sophomore, definitely is going to look to see how he does in the next two years. But Sutton now has the ball. He tried to get it inside to Barry, but it, 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 the pass was stolen by none other than a Keckle ball. Now Gibbs has the ball into the front court as Baruch looks to extend this lead. 23 to 21 with eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this first half. Yeah, Echobar doing a little of everything out there. Now Echobar kicks it over to Bridie, who pulls for the shot just off right iron as the Cougars try to get the rebound. And both players fighting for the board right there have to settle down. But Sign now has the ball as he looks to set up the offense for the Cougars. This game has been a, kind of a back and forth game as Sutton stops and pulls for the three. Just off the front of the rim. Now the Brew Bearcats has numbers as that Keckle ball looks to go all the way to the rim. But we have a call charge as Sutton was able to get set his feet and draw the charge. Yeah, Echo ball looked like he was playing in the Super Bowl on that one. <laughs> he just put his shoulder down and was trying to gain some yardage. But he's got to be a little bit smarter. They can't afford to have Eckerball get into foul trouble. Not at all. He only has one foul on the game, but, on the but game his, so far. But he's playing really, really hard. And sometimes when you're playing hard, you forget and things like an offensive foul could occur. Right now, Villar has got to really protect the basket and keep uh, Medgar Evers from driving. There you have right there, something going off for the layup, but Anthony Gibbs with the active hands, being able to knock that out. And we have a substitution with William Sixman checking into the game for Dwayne Brighty. Villal was there to contest that shot. That, that's what he's going to have to do because Medgar Evers is getting to the basket. And we have a turnover by Megan Evers as they could not get the inbounds pass in. Five-second technical. So now the ball will go back to the Bearcats. That, those are the turnovers that get coaches uh, to become gray because... Uh, William, you know, Sick William Sixman pulls for the three, could not knock it down there. Justin, now Spalding has the ball for Cougars who kicks it over to Benilla. Now Benilla working on William Sixman who kicks it over back to Spalding on the left wing who kicks it over to Bar Barrett. As Barrett stops... William Sixman putting the pressure on him as Anthony Gibbs flies in to try to steal the ball. Anthony Gibbs able to get the ball, not throw it off of Benilla and gets the ball back for the Bearcats. The Bearcats are playing with a lot of energy right now, Joe. Yeah, what happened is uh, Medgar Evers was very close to the sideline, so they were handicapped. Uh, and then once the pressure came, uh, that steal was made possible. So heads up play by Gibbs. Very good play right there, you know. Now Anthony Gibbs has it on the right wing, who kicks it back over to Bryla Page. Bryla Page looking for the open man, kicks it over to Anthony Gibbs. Anthony Gibbs on the baseline, kicks it inside with the quick pass to Keckle Bar, who puts up the layup. And now the Brook Bearcats now lead by four, 25 to 21, with six minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Yeah, the. Uh Medgar Evers has no answer for Echo Bar. Now we have an offensive foul on Megan Evers, and the ball will go back to the Bearcats. And checking in to the game for the, for the Cougars is Andrew Julian. Six Smith holding his left hand. You know, it was a high collision on that last play. Maybe he heard it a little bit. He looked like he's shaking it off as that Echo Bar inside. Kicks it over to Bage, who kicks it over to Gibbs, who just finds Villar inside, and Villar able to put up that layup, making his presence felt as coming off the bench. The Brook Bearcats now lead by six, 27 to 21. Great play by Gibbs uh, to hand it, literally hand, put it in the hands of Villar. Anthony Gibbs right now playing very well with six assists on the day. Now Julian has the ball for the Cougars, who kicks it over to Weeks. As Weeks looks to drive, puts up the layup, could not get it to fall. As Alan Villar with the block from behind on Jafet Thomas, but it's called for the foul. 
Pilar did a great play. Uh, he used all of his length to try and defend that, but he got the call against him. Yeah, it was a tough call right there. But the remaining active is Alan Villar. You know, but also to point out, Anthony Gibbs with six assists here early in this first half. First free throw is up and is good for the Cougars. 27 to 22. Baruch Bearcats lead by five. Yeah, Baruch, uh, their guard play could be a problem for Medgarevis because, you know, Gibbs, Page, Six Smith, uh, Six, Six Smith off the bench. Very, very crafty players can hurt you a lot of different ways. And that last free throw by Thomas was not good as Alan Villar was able to come down to the rebound. And now Gibbs hands off the ball to Six Smith. And now we have a foul on Julian. Ball is the foul on Julian, and now the Brook Bearcats will take the ball out on the right side of the court. Yeah, you, if you're Coach Nigro, you have to be upset. Fouls away from the ball, no need for that. Fouls away from the ball, only slows down the game. For the Brook Bearcats, could definitely get this team into foul trouble and utilize that free throw line and increase this lead. Now Anthony Gibbs has the ball on the right wing. He kicks it over to Six Smith. Six Smith stops and pulls for the three, and it is good. William Six Smith puts up the three, and it's good. I guess his hand is okay. Definitely. He had been able to put that one down. Didn't think about that one. Just put it up, let it fly, and then was able to knock it down. As Thomas tries to work on Villar, but Villar using that size, staying on the ground and just putting up his hands, and is able to alter that shot, and the ball will go back to the Bearcats. As Anthony Gibbs has in the front cards, he kicks it off to Six Smith. Now Kekabar kicks it back over to Gibbs as William Sixman thought about pulling but stopped, able to drive it to the rim, kicks it over to Gibbs on the baseline, kicks over to Page, William Sixman now has it in the corner, Gibbs inside, try to kick it over to Villar, but Bradley Page saves the, saves the ball and puts up the three and it is good. The Brew Bearcats back to back threes now extend their lead to 11, 33 to 22 with four minutes and 35 seconds remaining here in the first half. Yeah, that's what the three ball will do for you. Uh, it'll, it'll help extend leads. And it's definitely done that for the Brew Brick has they extended their lead to 11 points. And now they're playing very actively on defense. Quick, Six Smith getting his hand and poking his hand inside there. Sutton now working on Gibbs. Now Sutton kicks it over to Weeks, who just misses the shot. And now Ekekabar gets the ball into the front court in a hurry to Six Smith, but could not get the reverse layup to fall. As now Benila pulls for the three for the Megadeva Cougars could not get it to fall down, but Weeks flies in for the rebound. And Weeks could not get the ball to an open man as he's able to, he steps on the out of bounds line and will be going back to the Bearcats as they retain possession. Six Smith looked behind him. He thought he was going to get contact, and that's, you know, then he took his eye off the basket. And, uh, but, you know, still Baruch with an 11 point lead, the three balls working for them. And yeah, Brook Bearcats right now shooting a little bit on the 40% from the three-point line. Those two timely threes and those back-to-back -back percentages by Six Smith. And, oh, as Gibbs gets it inside to a Keko Bar. Great slam by a Keko Bar in that play. But that started with Bradley Page noticing that Gibbs was cutting, getting the ball inside to him. And then a Keko Bar was able to put down the slam as Anthony Gibbs now gets the pass from Bradley Page. And Anthony Gibbs lays up the ball. Bryler Page being active on those last two plays. First starting with the three on the prior possession and on the last two plays setting up both Anthony, Anthony Gibbs to Keko Bar and on that last play to Anthony Gibbs for the layup. The Brook Bearcats now enjoy a 15 point lead here. 37 to 22 with three minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Yeah, Jamal, uh, we have to point out the great guard play of Baruch. Yes, we understand an Echo Bar is the guy, but Page, Gibbs, uh, and even Six Smith, these are guys that can really hurt you. Uh, defense, they're strong, quick hands, they can penetrate, you know, they look, they don't look necessarily for the shot, and they're great passes. So if I'm Ed Garevers, I'm really concerned with the uh, guard play of Baruch. You definitely have to be concerned right now because the guard play of Baruch has been. Ex been exceptional right now with 12 assists only on 15 shots. 
Now Sutton has the ball with the spin on Gibbs. Able to get the shot up, but it rims out. And now the rebound by Andre Harris as Anthony Gibbs has the ball in the front court. Yeah, he did everything but knock down the shot. It was a great spin move to get himself open. And he did get himself open, but Anthony Gibbs right now. Nine assists with William Sixsmith with the three-pointer. Could not get the knockdown. Andre Harris tips up the shot. Could not get the rebound, and it goes back to the Cougars. Now Swabi kicks it over to Barrett. Could not get the shot to knock down as Akekobar is defending against Thomas. And Thomas turns over the ball as Ryler Page comes up with the steal. And now Anthony Gibbs has it in the front court for the Bearcats. Yeah, Medgar Evers is getting shots. They're just not knocking him down. Mm. Uh, if I was Page or Gibbs, I would ask for the ball. Uh, I know Echobar really wants to make something happen. But right now, if you're Baruch, you know, you just work the clock. And no need for a turnover like that. You definitely work the clock on that. Speaking of Kekobar, 18 points and 7 rebounds on the day. Definitely having a monster start to his afternoon so far. Now Benila has it for the Cougars. Brook Bearcats are very active. Sutton puts up the shot. Could not get it to fall. Rebound goes to Anthony Gibbs. And the Brook Bearcats find themselves up. 37 to 22 at the two minute mark in the first half. Yeah, Med Garevis has had a lot of empty possessions in this uh, last few minutes. Now, Bradley Page works his way inside, kicks it over to Kekko Ball, kicks it over to Andre Harris. At Kekko Ball for the corner three, puts up the three, and it's good. At Kekko Ball with the three pointer, now has 21 points in the first half. He's definitely making his presence felt out there on the court. And right now he's coming up big for the Bearcats as they enjoy an 18-point lead here at the 1 minute and 30-second 30, 30 mark in the first half. But coming right back for the Cougars is, a, is Maurice Swaby the second. Now has eight points on the day. Well, Swaby coming in, the leading scorer for Medgar Evers, he's a guy that could, you know, do some damage. Uh, and if there's going to be a comeback, he's got to be part of it for Medgar Evers. Now Bryla Page puts up the three-point in the corner three. Good find by Kekko Ball to find it. Bryla Page in the corner and able to put up the three. The score is now 43-25 to 25 at the one-minute mark in the first half. The Bearcats now lead by 18 with the steal by Kekko Ball. Now Bryla Page gets the pass, but stops the offense and slows it down as Gibbs tries to get inside, but it's fouled by... Maurice Swaby the second. The Brook Bearcats will be taking the ball out on the left side. And now the Megadevers College, one more foul will put them in the bonus. Page has been a huge factor here in the first half for Baruch. And his three ball has just uh, made it more difficult. Now for Six Smith with the three, and it is good. The three ball just allowing Baruch to build this very large lead here. And now they, and they're shooting 50% from the three, and Swaby pressing a little bit on that play, just coming down court and putting up that three-pointer, but the ball will go back to the Bearcats as they get the rebound, and Gibbs find himself in the front court. 46-25 to 25 with 20 seconds remaining in the first half. The Bearcats enjoy a 21-point lead. Yeah, Swaby trying to get it all back in one shot. And that's not how you get it. You know, you got to get runs going. And now six minutes kicks over to Bala Page who puts up another three and it is good. The Baru Bearcats are dropping them threes on threes today. And now the Baru Bearcats now lead by 24 points. And at the buzzer right there, the Baru Bearcats, 49 to 25. This game has gotten away so far from the Cougars. And the Baru Bearcats have definitely played on all cylinders. Shooting over 50% from three-pointer and from the field. Well, you know, if you're Med Garevers, you're scratching your head because you had a very good start, and it was just, you know, it was uh, training baskets. One-point lead is right there. But then once, uh, you know, Echobar asserted himself and the guard play of Baruch became a factor, Page knocking down three, six Smith getting on the board, Anthony uh, Gibbs penetrating, uh, I like the couple of minutes that Villar was in the game because Villar made uh, Medgar Evers kind of adjust. So you had all these things going on, and uh, Medgar Evers just couldn't make shots. So that didn't help their cause. So at 49-25, 
the, once again, the start of the second half, those first five minutes, can uh, Medgarevis find some type of offense that can nip, nip and tuck their way back into this game? But I like Baruch. Uh, remember, it's senior day. So there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm coming from the Baruch side. And I think that this lead uh, at the moment looks uh, like it's, it's all that Baruch needs. I don't see Ekebar uh, faltering, and I, I just see uh, other players starting to get going for uh, Baruch with Ekebar and Paige really um, providing the lead. And talk about senior day. You know, they're going to come out with a lot of energy and play solid, but also knowing that Staten Island lost, and if they win out the next two games, they have an opportunity to push their way up to the second seed in the CUNYAC Conference. It must be a lot of that must be a very big motivator for them here as they've been playing out through this game. But we have to credit their defense as well, causing 14 turnovers and points off turnovers for the Bearcats, 18. Yeah, well, you know, the guard play of Baruch, uh, there was a couple of exemplary uh, steals by Page. Page very active, Gibbs very active. Uh, this guard play is a luxury to have if you're Coach Alisi. I, I keep mentioning the upper body strength of the Baruch guards, uh, and that could cause a lot of players to back off. You know, it's kind of that football mentality, you know. Right. Uh, so uh, the guards have really ignited um, the play today. And, of course, Echobar is playing on a different level. He keeps adding to his great legacy here at Baruch points, and just the way, uh, you know, he has an effect on the court. He's always looking to pass the ball. He gets great position. He gets steals. You know, uh, what doesn't he do? I don't, I don't think he drives the team bus to away games. <laughs> uh, or I don't think he washes the uniforms. No. But, he, but he certainly does, Jamal, everything. And it's, it's a great luxury to have a player like that. And it makes your job a little easier. And then he's got a great supporting cast. Definitely have a great supporting cast, and they have picked them up big tonight as Bryla Page and William Sixsmith with 15 points, and Bryla Page with 15 points and William Sixsmith with six points, all coming off three-pointer. This is, has a little bit of a feel of like how the last game was in the Battle of Legs. Although the lead wasn't as great, you saw Bryla Page and William Sixsmith really pick up the team with their production in the first half, and their Kekko Bar coming out in the second half and really – being a factor, but so far, at Kegel Bar, being aggressive early and often has opened up more shots for just Bryla Page and as well as William Sixsmith. Yeah, teams that are successful have a lot of, you know, one and A, B, and C. If you look when the Miami Heat had D. Wade and LeBron, uh, you know, they Wade does what he does from the guard position. He can right. play big, he can play small. Uh, you know, LeBron does his thing there, but it just, uh, when you put these guys together, it's a synergy right. that, that just um, is, is something that's insurmountable for oppositions. Let's face it, Meg Rivers would have had to come in here today and have a super, super game, almost not miss a shot. Uh, they had lots of attempts uh, in that second quarter, but the shots didn't drop. And then uh, Baruch came back and capitalized, so that's how that lead grew. But let's credit Medgar Evers had an interesting first quarter. You know, they, they were playing hard. They were making shots. They do have a 20-point scorer in Swabi on their team. But their overall attack uh, hasn't been able to match the attack of uh, Baruch. So in the second half, if I'm Coach Nigro, I'm going to look for the first five minutes. Can you start something? Uh, and get Baruch thinking and on their heels and then, um, you know, playing off of that. If you're Baruch, you have a 24-point lead and you're really protecting uh, that lead and trying to play good basketball because this game will be over and then we have to worry about the next game and that playoff is right around the corner. So whatever place Baruch finishes in, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. No, definitely. Whatever force they, whatever position they find themselves at at the end of this, at the end of the next two games, a force to be reckoned with. And right now, the Bearcats lead 49 to 25 over the Megat Evers Cougars. And some stats for you here: leading scores for the Baruch Bearcats is at Kekobar with 21 points and seven boards. 
Right behind him is Bryla Page with 15 points and two assists. And right behind him is William Sixsmith with six points, all coming from three-pointers. And to add in, who's having a great night and with the assist, Anthony Gibbs, nine, po- nine assists and two points. And for your Mega Dever Cougars, you have Benila with 10 points, Swabby the second with eight points. We'll be back momentarily for the conclusion of this game. The second half will be underway shortly. It starts right when you hit the court. You imagine your finest moment. The game when you shot that gets you to the dance. A monster dunk or no look pass and cutting down the net. Sports lets us dream of our own success and prepare us for our finest moments on and off the court. For the love of the game, but for those of us who are Division III student athletes, it's more than that, a lot more. Sure, the game is important, but as we work so hard to build both mind and body, it's more about team. That is why NCAA Division III teamed up with Special Olympics, and in giving the gift of sport to those for whom it seemed an impossible dream, we are working to make this a better world. Help us keep that dream alive. You can make a difference.
No one ever won a race because it was their turn. And guzzling the right sports drink never won all three sets. You can't talk your way through a tournament, and luck doesn't last. Real champions know that it takes more to do more, because wanting it just isn't good enough. You've got to be smarter, faster, tougher. After all, if championships were easy, everybody would have one. City University of New York Athletic Conference. Learn. Play. Succeed. For the love of the game, but for those of us who are Division III student-athletes, it's more than that, a lot more. Sure, the game is important, but as we work so hard to build both mind and body, it's more about team. That is why NCAA Division III teamed up with Special Olympics, and in giving the gift of sport to those for whom it seemed an impossible dream, we are working to make this a better world. Help us keep that dream alive. You can make a difference. And we are back, and we are close to the second half being underway. Alongside me is Joe Stolz, and I'm Jamal Chapman. And we've been enjoying two very good games. First off, the first game, on senior day, we saw the women, the Lady Bearcats, win 70-33 to against the Lady Cougars of Megadevers College. And a great game for Shannon Barrett, Daniela Arias, Jacqueline Thamakun, Maria Marianthopoulos, and Demetra Papadopoulos, all seniors for the Lady Bearcats. And right now, the Brooke, the Brooke Bearcats men enjoy a 24-point lead, 49-25, to 25, and we're almost ready for the second half. Yeah, Jamal, uh, shout-out to the women. They rose to the occasion, a second game in a row. They made the most of senior day. They made the most of Battle of Lexington. Right now, uh, the Baruch men up comfortable 49-25 lead. And Coach Alisi just urging them to not hurt themselves, come out, set the tone, and make uh, Megarevers really, really, really work hard to get back in this game. Baruch doesn't want to turn it over. They don't want to stop the clock. And they want to really play good basketball, which is going to carry over into the next game. The first five minutes really are important for both teams. Uh, Baruch trying to hold the lead, and Medgar Evers trying to find somehow to get back into this game, hopefully one play at a time. Definitely one play at a time. And as you guys hear that buzzer, the second half will be underway in a few seconds. But the Bearcats right now enjoy a comfortable 24-point lead. But with the second half of 20 minutes, you never know what can happen. So the Baruch Bearcats must remain aggressive and continue to play great defense and take advantage of those offensive possessions. But the Mega Devers Cougars will have the ball here as Sutton work his way into the front court. And he's looking to set up the offense for the Cougars. Of course, Medgar Evers, uh, led by Swabby in his 20 points per game. Uh, let's see if he can get started. Now Manila has the ball baseline, puts up the shot, but Akekabar is able to get the block, and the ball will go back to the Megadevers Cougars. But talking about Swabby, the 20 point, the leading scorer, averaging over, averaging 20 points on the season. So far, the Brook Bearcats have been doing a good job against him, as he only has eight points in this game. 
Now inside to Benila as he puts up the layup. Could not get it to fall. Brook Bearcats fight for the ball. It goes back to Agavis. And he get a timeout. We have a timeout as Shivers the second was able to come up with the rebound and get the timeout and the possession back for the Cougars. Good hustle by Medgar Evers. A uh, good start here in the second half. They're playing hard. But, uh, again, the clock is moving, and Medgar Evers has got to make some baskets and limit uh, the production from Baruch to try and get back in this game. Coach Negro is definitely going to talk, talk it over with his team right now. But... Another great, this, this is why this game is very, another good thing is that this game is very important for the Bearcats as Staten Island loses today. They're now going to be 12 and 4. And if the Brook Bearcats win out the next two games, they'll go into with a tie for second and third place. And they will get the second seed because of tiebreakers. So the Brook Bearcats putting themselves in position to win this game currently. And if, if everything goes well, they should be walking out of here victorious. Right, it's great when you can control your own destiny and take care of business. Uh, there's a turnover or shot clock violation against Medgar Evers. But yeah, right now, Baruch has everything uh, working for them. And uh, really what they have to do is just keep this momentum going and, you know, just uh, victory after victory, great for confidence. But you got to get everybody going. No, Andre Harris kicks it over Six Smith who pulls for three. And in the face of Sutton, he's able to knock it down as Sutton kind of deflated after being jayed by William Sixsmith. When Sixsmith is going, uh, that's a great help to this Baruch attack. Now Anthony Gibbs kicks over to the open at Keckle Bar, who goes up for the slam, and it is good at Keckle Bar with the slam on that one. The score is now 54 to 25. The Baruch Bearcats has come out aggressive here in the second half with 18 minutes and 45 seconds remaining here. Medgar Evers uh, not really giving a defensive um, opposition against Baruch. They're just standing around and Baruch is finding openings. And Anthony Gibbs was able to kick it over. Andre Harris from now. Akekabar has the ball, lines up the three. He's not able to knock it down. Bradley Page almost came down with it, but the ball goes over to Sutton from the pass from Swabi and is able to get the layup. 54 to 27 with 18 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the second half. Yeah, that was an unusual breakdown uh, for Medgar Evers, which led to an easy basket. And they took advantage of the Root Bearcats out of position on that play. Now Anthony Gibbs kicks it over to Akeka Ball, who pump fakes, kicks it back to Gibbs, who pulls for the three, lines it up, hits the front of the rim, not able to knock it down, and the ball go back to the Cougars. As Swabi the second has it, he's working on Bradley Page right now. Swabi kicks it over to Shivers the second. Shivers now has the ball, kicks it over to Benila. And William Sixsmith is playing solid defense on him. Puts the hand up, able to con put up a good contest. And now Andre Harris comes down with the rebound. And Anthony Gibbs slows down the game for the Bearcats. Swabi, uh, not really a factor here. Uh, so if Mega Revers is going to do anything in this game, they, it's got to start with Swabby. Now William Sixman kicks it over to Anthony Gibbs, who looks to drive all the way to the rim, switches hands and puts up the layup with the right hand. Great shot by Anthony Gibbs on that one and extending the Brook Bearcats lead to 29. 56-27, the Bearcats lead with 17 minutes and 9 seconds remaining in this game. And now we have a travel call by Shivers, working his way down in the paint, trying to get the layup there, but could not handle his feet, and the ball go back to the Bearcats. Gibbs uh, showing body control and strength, something we point out a lot. That's something, an attribute of the Baruch guards, Page, Gibbs. Uh, great strength from the weight room. Definitely great strength for the Bearcats right there. As William Sixsmith has the ball on the right wing. Goes all the way to the rim, puts up the shot. You know, Six Smith is always known for putting up the three, but working off the dribble and putting up the lay, the little floater there and converting. 58-27 with 16 minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the second half. Six Smith, a very crafty player, can find many ways to get to the basket. And now the Brew Bearcats fighting. Andre Harris able to come up with the, the pass from Andre Harris, and now... Anthony Gibbs slowed down the offense, looking to milk some of this clock over here, looking to get a good offensive possession. Anthony Gibbs kicks it back to Andre Harris, who almost stops to pump fake, but moves his feet just a little bit, and the ball will be going back to the Bearcats. I mean, sorry, excuse me, the Cougars. Andre Harris uh, couldn't believe how wide open he was. 
So that, that kind of helped out with that uh, turnover because he, he didn't realize how open he was, didn't know what to do with the ball. Definitely didn't know what to do on that play. But the ball, go back to the Cougars and checking in for the Bearcats is Bridey. As Sutton gets Gibbs off his feet, try to draw the foul, but not did not get the call. And the ball go back to the Bearcats as the ball goes out of bounds. Now Dwayne Bridey inbounds the ball to Gibbs, and he looks to work his way into the front court. Yeah, Medgar Evers is unsure really what they want to do. Once again, Swabby, uh, their leading scorer. If he's not doing anything, I'm not sure who the second and third options are for Medgar Evers. And now another turnover for the Bearcats as William Sixsmith is called for the travel on this play. But the Bearcats still up by 31 points right now with 15 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the second half. Now Swabby the second, kicks, the, kicks it over to Walters, who kicks over to Benila. Benila pulls for three, not able to knock it down. Walters comes flying in from behind Anthony Gibbs to knock out, out the ball, but they say the ball goes off of Gibbs, and the Cougars will have the ball back underneath their rim. Now Sutton looks to inbounds the pass, gets it over to Swabby the second. And Gibbs contests the three-pointer, but Swabby the second able to rise above him and knock it down. Okay, well, that's that's what Megan needs uh, in a big way. Swabby to get going. He definitely needed him. He was able to knock down that three-pointer. 58 to 30 with 15 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the second half. Now Andre Harris has the ball on the left wing, kicks it over to William Sixman, who looks to drive all the way, puts up the layup, just misses off the left iron, and now the ball goes back to the Cougars as Manila is working it. He's made to the front court on William Sixsmith. And now we have a steal by Andre Harris. He needs to watch behind him as Swabby the second tips it out of bounds. But the ball go back to the Bearcats. One of the things that Sixsmith uh, could work on in the offseason is his strength. Because uh, once he gets in close, he's going to have to really uh, muscle it in. Uh, I know he's crafty, but uh, he's going to have to find other ways to get shot attempts. Now... That Kekko boy has the ball, kicks it over to Bridey, kicks it over to the right corner, over to Andre Harris. He's looking to get rid of the ball. Kicks it over to the left block to Kekko ball, working his way back and down. Walters passes over to Dwayne Bridey as Dwayne Bridey tries to work inside, able to get back the re get back the ball, puts up the shot, could not knock it down, and the rebound will go back to the Cougars as Benila was able to come down with that one. Now Swabby the second stops and pulls for three. Could not get it to knock down. You have Hassan Jones with the over-the-back foul on the Kekko ball. Now the ball go back to the Bearcats as Jack Sixsmith has checked in for Anthony Gibbs. Now Jack Sixsmith kicks over the ball to Andre Harris. Harris now kicks it over. Looking to pass the ball. Finds William Sixsmith on the right wing. He sets the screen for him. Now, William Sixsmith with the great pass, kicks it inside to Andre Harris, and he converts on that. Yeah, Scor not, not a lot of defense, Jamal, from Med Garevers. Baruch is kind of can do whatever they want. Definitely can do whatever they want on that play, and they made the defense pay. 60 to 30, the Brook Bearcats lead by 30, with 13 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this game. But coming right back down is Sutton with the left wing three. 60 to 33, the Brook Bearcats now lead by 27. Yeah, Sutton looks like a good player. He just hasn't uh, done much in this game, but he's got a good looking shot. Oh, tough for Andre Harris right there, who tries to put up the free throw line jumper. Almost had the ball stolen, but Jack Sixsmith able to find him inside. But Andre Harris kicks the ball back out to a Kekko ball, who pulls up for the three, but <coughs> could not get it to fall. Swabby comes down with the rebound. And now has the ball in the front court. Kicks it over to Sutton on the right wing. With the spin, Sutton puts up the shot and is good. Able to get it to fall is Justin Sutton. Now the lead is 25. The Bearcats 60. Cougars 35 with 12 minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the second half. Yeah, Justin Sutton uh, showing some offensive ability. Definitely. Definitely on those back-to-back -back plays right there. First with a three, and now with the spin baseline jumper, able to cut into this Bearcat lead. Now Jack Sixsmith gets the inbound pass from William Sixsmith. 
So now kicks the ball over to Dwayne Brady on the left wing. Dwayne Brady kicks it inside to Alan Velo, who just checked in for a keckle ball. Could not knock down that shot in the rebound by Swaby the second. Yeah, Velo's got to make that shot. He's got such Ooh. great position. And talk about Alan Velo not, not being able to knock down that shot. Swaby found the open lane, but he was met by Alan Velo, who swatted that ball out of bounds. Now you had Sutton getting in the ball too, Jafet Thomas, but it was knocked out by Andre Harris. Now we have a timeout by Coach Negro. Well, Jamal, at this point, 12 to 33 left in the game. Uh, Coach Negro is just trying to get uh, the Medgarevas team to play good basketball. I understand the scoreboard tells one story, but he really, he wants to get it in his head. No matter what, you're up, down. You just got to go back to playing good uh, fundamental basketball because, listen, the next game for Medgar Evers may be a totally different story, so they got to be ready. For Baruch, it's just uh, keep playing, keep working on things, uh, make good passes, don't turn it over, get into good themselves, good basketball habits, because soon they're going to have to really play and bring it because everybody's going to be jockeying for position. Everybody's got their eye on the prize, which is the CUNY Championship. Yeah, the CUNY Act Championship is definitely important for the Bearcats. They want to walk out of here victorious, put themselves in that second seed. You know, with that early loss by um, College of Staten Island, they now have an attempt, they haven't have a chance to find themselves in that second seed if they went out the rest of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the game plan for Coach Alisi is, is to win, win, win. Now Benina kicks it over to Sutton who stops and shoots the straightaway three. It's William Sixman tries to fight away, trying to get down that rebound, not able to get, get it down. But Sutton receives the pass, puts up the three. Sutton gets back the rebound and he will have it on the right wing, trying to get it inside to Thomas. But the ball goes off of Alan Villar, and it'll go back to the Cougars. Swabby the second now has it with the pump fake steps back three. Put it up, not able to knock it down. But fighting underneath is Hassan Jones, and the ball goes out, out of, off of the hands of Alan Villar and out of bounds, and it'll go back to the Cougars. Swabby the second now has it over in the left corner. Kicks it over to Sutton with the jab step. Step back, now moves around his feet, puts up the upping on the shot, but not get able to let it get it to fall as Jack Sixsmith now has the ball in the front court. Yeah, Swabby and Sutton uh, look like they can do some things, so that's something that Coach Nigro can work with. Now the steal by Swabby the second, trailing was Alan Villar, but could not get there to block the shot. Now the score is 60 to 37 at the 11:39. 11 minute and 39 second mark in this game. The group Bearcats lead by 23. Now this game is far from over and the Cougars still have an opportunity to come back in this game. What are some things that the group Bearcats have to do to hold off the Cougars? Yeah, well in, in the respect of huddles, Jamal, Coach Nigro is saying, hey, uh, we got them thinking. Let's, let's keep playing as hard as we possibly can. Get good defensive stops and get good shots on offense. Coach Alisi is saying, listen, don't look at the scoreboard. Just keep playing. Don't give them easy opportunities. And, you know, let's, let's not turn the ball over. So, Jamal, it's kind of simple. Don't hurt yourself if you're Baruch. Don't, you know, don't stop the clock. Um, and just play. Definitely some important things the Bearcats are going to have to do because, you know, as you said Coach Nigro definitely talking to his players and definitely telling them what they need to do. But Dwayne Brady has the ball in the front court as he kicks it over to Andre Harris. Now has it over on the left wing. Finds William Sixsmith. And now William Sixsmith is working on Benila as Alan Villar tries to get position on Hassan Jones. As Villar works his web inside, able to muscle through, put up the layup, and it is good. Alan Villar will go to the line for one more as he was able to draw the foul. 62 to 37 with 11 minutes and 16 seconds remaining in this game. Baruch Bearcats lead. Classic post move by Villar, and that's a good thing to see if you're Coach Alisi because 
you, you, you never can get enough quality post play. And uh, Velar is such a big body. You know, right. he, he can really be a great help with uh, the attack. Uh, and everybody's looking at Echo Bar, and now you'd have to look at Villar. Definitely a, a, a player that they could definitely utilize in the post, especially on that last play. Although he couldn't knock down the last free throw, the lead is now 25 for the Bearcats, 62 to 37. The Bearcats, with 11 minutes and five seconds remaining in this game, if they can continue to do what they've been doing throughout this game, they should be able to walk out of here victorious. Now Benila has it for the Cougars in the front court as he kicks it over to Jones, but unable to get the pass as Alan Villar comes in for the steal. But Benila fouls him to slow down the Bearcats, and they'll take the ball out of bounds. Well, that's one for the highlight reel that your post player gets out in the open court and causes a steal. That's usually a, a guard play. Now we have a substitution. Sport. Daryl Spaulding in for Giancarlo Benila for the Megadeva Cougars. Now Anthony Gibbs has the ball. Kicks it over to Jack Sixsmith. Anthony Gibbs checking in for William Sixsmith. Dwayne Brighton now has the ball over to George Smith Jr. Kicks it over to Jack Smith. Gives it back to Gibbs. Gibbs now has it. Kicks it over to Jack Smith. And now Alan Villar has the ball. Kicks it over to Dwayne Brighty. Now Brighty pulls for the shot with the Track clock winding down. Now Sutton finds trying to dribble all the way into the front court in a hurry. Who kicks it over to Barrett? Who kicks it back over to Sutton on the baseline? Puts up the floater. Could not knock it down. Alan Villar with the rebound. He kicks it over to Anthony Gibbs, and Anthony Gibbs slows it down for the Bearcats. Yeah, Sutton was forcing it there, but you know he's he's a good offensive player. He's trying to uh, get the ball in the basket for Medgaravis. He's definitely trying all that he can do to bring his team back. Now Jack Sixsmith has the ball on the left wing. Kicks it inside to Alan Villar on the left block. With the post moves, Alan Villar able to work up and under on Hassan Jones and get that layup to fall. 64-37 with 9 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the second half. Now for the Cougars, Sutton has the ball with the jab step on Gibbs. Now Sutton driving in, able to get the ball inside to Jafet Thomas and is able to draw the foul. Jafet Thomas with the, two, with the layup and the foul will be going to the line for one more shot. That was a very good-looking play by Med uh, A guard streaking down the middle, finding a post player, and a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. He definitely steps to the line there, puts up the shot. Just missed off right iron as Barrett tries to knock the ball off of Dwayne Brody, but he fails and knocked the ball out of bounds. The ball will be going back to the Bearcats. Now we see the Cougars putting on the press, but the Bearcats able to work themselves through it and get themselves to the front court. Gibbs now has the ball. Trying to work the clock here. Now Jack Sixsmith has it on the left wing. Back over to Gibbs. Who kicks it inside to Villar. Villar now trying to use those post moves again. Working on Thomas and Jones who came over to double team him. Caused him to turn over the ball. Yeah, Villar got in too deep. Uh, nothing he can do there. But, you know, he's got to keep working. Because he's going to be a big part of this attack going forward. Definitely has to keep working. And definitely has to improve for the Bearcats. Now Sun has the ball guarded by Gibbs. Dwayne Brady almost altering and stealing that pass. Barrett trying to be able to get it inside to Hassan Jones, but was fouled on the floor by Alan Villar. Yeah, Medgarevis got great penetration there. Uh, Medgarevis has done a couple of good things here uh, in the second half, but unfortunately, you know, that, that lead is so big but Coach Nigro has some things to build off of. He's got the 20 point score in Swabby. He's got Sutton, who's a good looking offensive player. He's got some size. Now we have a substitution here. In for Jack Sixsmith is DeAndre Gibbs. On the floor for the Bearcats Anthony Gibbs, DeAndre Gibbs, Dwayne Brady, George Smith Jr., and Alan Villar. 
as Justin Sutton was able to knock down that shot for the Mega Devers Cougars. The, lead, the score is now 64-41. Bearcats lead with, at the 8 minute and 25 second mark in this game. DeAndre Gibbs huddled up by Sutton and Spaulding able to get, get the pass over to George Smith Jr. Now Gibbs has the ball back. Tries to get it inside to George Smith Jr. but it was unsuccessful as Sutton has the ball. Stops and pulls for the three and it is good. The Baruch Bearcats lead by 20 but they was leading by 10 minutes a few minutes ago. Score is 64-44 with 7 minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the second half. The uh, little pressure from Medgar Evers causing Gibbs to turn it over. So we do have a slight momentum change here. Uh, Sutton really one-handed uh, bringing Medgar Evers back. Let's see if this can continue now. Baruch hasn't had an answer for Sutton. Sutton so far in this game. Nine points and five boards. Now Sutton has the ball for the Cougars. Inside Sutton kicks it off to Thomas, who works his way inside. Able to get the shot up and over George Smith Jr. The lead is now cut down to 18. This is Bearcats 64, Cougars 46, with seven, seven minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this game. Yeah, Matt Garevis has got to have really good defensive possessions now to uh, continue this little comeback. And, uh, and, and Baruch Bearcats need to find an answer on the offensive end. And now we have a jump ball. Oh, excuse me. We have a foul by Barrett for the Cougars. The ball will go back to the Bearcats. Yeah, that was just a, that was a hustle foul. That was, you know, Meg Revers is playing hard. And Brute, and Akeko Bar able to get the pass on the baseline for the jumper, not able to knock it down. Now Spalding has it, working on Dwayne Bridey. Dwayne Bridey staying right in front of him, being active. Now Justin Sutton and Anthony Gibbs, mano y mano going at it. Sutton pulls for the three, not able to knock it down, just short. And the rebound will go to Dwayne Brody, and the Bearcats will have the ball. Yeah, Sutton a little out of his range. If he stepped up a little bit, look like he would probably knock that one down. But Gibbs now kicks it over to Smith, George Smith Jr. As Gibbs kicks it over to Kekobar. Kekobar able to draw the foul on the play. Jafet Thomas with the foul. And Kekobar will go to the line for two. What a good way to slow down the game. Go to the free throw line. Kekobar is a 78% free throw shooter for the Bearcats. Let's see how he does at the line here. Once again, Echobar taking matters into his own hands uh, and a chance to put that lead back up to 24, Baruch. So it could come down to uh, the leader, uh, Echobar, really securing this victory for the Bearcats. And talk about a monster game for Echobar so far. 24 points and 10 rebounds and 6 steals. Yeah, he, you know, he's a stat machine, really. He's not preseason All-American for nothing. Uh, he's uh, really earned some accolades here while he's played at Baruch. And, he, you know, the funny thing is uh, he's not done yet. He's got lots of basketball left in him. And now checking in for the Cougars is Swabby the second in for Spalding. Now Swabby the second has the ball to the front court for the Cougars. Kicks it over to Barrett. He tried to work inside, but could not handle his feet. Picking up his pivot foot, and it's called for the travel. Yeah, he got caught up in traffic. Once you get in caught up in traffic like that, it's tough to do anything. You know, you need to bring out the ball and spread it around and pass and uh you know, these, these are the kind of things that uh, allow for a comeback. Medgar Evers was doing some things, but now they've, uh, they've cooled down. Definitely has cooled down, and that was led by Sutton, who was, who was very aggressive on the offensive end for them as that kicker ball drives on the right, right side, able to get the layup up and knock it down. 68 to 46 with five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in. The second half. Yeah, you got to credit Echo Bar. He kind of put out the fire. 
And right now, Ikekabar with 27 points, 10 boards, and 6 steals. But his points uh, came at a time when Medgarevis was uh, showing some signs of mounting a comeback. So credit Ekebar again, uh, good timing to uh, stop. Uh, and now Medgarevis comes back with a nice post move. As Hassan Jones knocks it down on a Keko bar. Score is now 68 to 48. At the five minute and five second mark of this game, the Brook Bearcats lead by 20. I almost fall a loose ball. Andre Harris able to fight for the stolen ball. Kick it inside to Anthony Gibbs. But Anthony Gibbs was fouled on the play by Hassan Jones. Yeah, Gibbs was almost out of bounds. Then he got fouled. A good way to work the pump fake down there by Gibbs to get the defender in the air. So the Cougars are now in the bonus, and they will be – Cougars are now in – Brook Bearcats – have an opportunity at a one and one as the Cougars are in the penalty. The first free throw rims out, and the Cougars now have the ball. And at the four minute and 55 second mark in this game, the Brook Bearcats lead by 20. If the Cougars need to try to want to try to do something in this game, they need to start now. If not, it's not going to look good for them. As Swabby the second gets past the defense, puts up the layup. But a great block by Andre Harris. Well, Swami chose to do an underhand shot. If he would have gone overhand, he might have had a really easy basket. Uh, he made that harder for himself. Right, because Andre Harris definitely used his length on that play. Now you have Weeks over there working on William Sixsmith, able to draw the foul on that play. So in on this clock, they're running out of time for Megan Evers right now as Manila gets set to check back in. Yeah, Medgar Evers uh, mounted a little bit of an attack, but again, clock is definitely not on their side uh, to come back from 20. But they did, for Coach Nigro, he can take away some, uh, some things. Uh, Sutton is definitely a player who you can do some things with, along with Swabby. And Sutton, speaking of Sutton right now, definitely trying to move on, on Anthony Gibbs, but wasn't able to get the shot to fall. As checking back in for the Bearcats is Dwayne Brady and Bryla Page. Those basketball historians out there, you might want to Google Phil Chenier, who played for the Baltimore Bullets. Sutton has a like rise up jump shot that Chenier had. You now Dwayne Brady wasn't able to knock down that shot right there. As Swabby the second has the Ball tries to put up the layup, not able to get it to fall. The Cougars right now pressing, knowing that they're not, they don't have a lot of time here to come back. And definitely a, a struggling night for Swabby the second with only 13 points, but shooting 5 for 14 from the field. Andre Harris kicks the ball inside to Bottle Page on the baseline. And Bottle Page tries to go up against the defense, not able to get the layup to fall, but will be going to the line for two. But there's the upper body strength of Bryla Page. Uh, he can make things happen for himself uh, because he can maneuver uh, inside there with that upper body strength. Definitely can maneuver, and he definitely made that, made that use that upper body strength on that plane as he's able to knock down the first free throw. 69-48 with three minutes and 39 seconds remaining here in the final half of this game. Although he couldn't make the second free throw, the Brook Bearcats find themselves up by 21. And with three minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this game, the Brook Bearcats can definitely, when they get back to the ball on the offensive end, just work that clock and they should be able to walk out of here victorious. But Swabby puts up the shot, not able to knock it down, but the rebound by Thomas as he goes back up, able to draw the foul and will be going to the line for two. The foul is on Andre Harris. Good fight by Thomas underneath. Uh, I think that he's a player that Coach Nigro can probably look to get a lot of production. Long body. Definitely Coach can look forward to him. He's only being, he's only a sophomore and at 6'6", maybe around for the program for two more years to come. Not able to knock down the first. Score is 69-48 with three minutes and 20 seconds remaining in 
the final half of this yeah, game. Yeah, he's going to spend some time working on his free throws because he's going to get to the foul line a lot because he's active underneath. So uh, coming up empty is something he's going to have to work on. Definitely have to work on that. But Page now has the ball. Definitely working it back out. Don't No need to rush here. With three minutes and five seconds remaining in this game, the Bearcats, all they need to do is work this clock. As Andre Harris with the step back three, not able to knock it down. Falls down, was able to flip over with a great pass from Swabi inside to Thomas. Full court, Swabi pulls for three. It's good. Swabi, Swabi the second comes back up the court and is able to knock down the three. Score is now 69-51 with two minutes and 35 seconds remaining in this game. Root Bearcats lead by 18. Swabi showing long range on that three ball. Definitely trying all he can to bring back the team, but it's looking like it's a little bit too late. But until that clock says zero, anything can happen. Sprider Page now has the ball working on Benila, looking to work his way inside. Get inside and able to convert with the layup. Bryla Page successful on that layup. 71 to 51 with two minutes and eight seconds remaining in this final half. The Baruch Bear Cats lead by 20. That was also another example of this upper body strength of Bryla Page. Uh, he warded off the defender and got himself uh, a layup. So credit the strength and conditioning of the Baruch Bear Cats. Again, Coach Tamar Fareed uh, does a great job uh, in that department. And now with the Bearcats up by 20, slowing it down on offense, just trying to work this clock here. Dwayne Bridey now has the ball, works his way inside, tries the underscoop layup, but it's called for the foul. The foul is on Jafet Thomas, who was unpleased, it was kind of who was displeased with that call, but Dwayne Bridey will be going to the line for two shots. Yeah, he was trying to dispute that uh, there was any contact. As he steps in for the first free throw. Couldn't get that one to get knocked down that one, but have another opportunity for a second free throw. With one minute and 33 seconds remaining in this game, the Brook Bearcats lead by 20, 71 to 51. And if nothing crazy doesn't happen here in the Ark Arena, the Brook Bearcats will walk out of here victorious. Yeah, Baruch has got to uh, themselves get in the gym and work on their free throws. You really want to be uh, perfect at the foul line because that's going to come down to some situations in the games ahead where free throws are going to decide games. And as Swabi gets the pass from Hassan Jones, Chima Kekabar was saying was having none of that as he was able to swap back that layup. Good block by Kekabar in that play. Now Swabi second now has the pass. Gets it over to Hassan Jones. Puts up the shot. Not able to knock it down as a Kekko ball was able to tap that ball over to Bryla Page. Anthony Gibbs slows down the offense. Almost loses the ball there. But had Andre Harris there trailing to get the ball back for him. Kekko ball now has the ball. And the Bearcats just looking to milk this clock and walk out of here victorious. And now with this win for the Bearcats, they have a great opportunity... Woo, and talk about walking out of here victorious. They're not slowing it down on offense as a Kekko ball found Andre Harris there for the alley hoop layup. And Andre Harris able to convert on that play. 74 to 51 with 47 seconds remaining in this game. The Bearcats are walking out of here victorious. But more importantly, they're one game away from potentially putting themselves in the second seat of the CUNYAC Conference. Yeah, yeah. They're, so far, they're taking care of their business, and uh, that's a sign of a good team, a good coach, uh, t well-coached team who really, uh, you know, just uh, doesn't, doesn't put themselves in any other position than to be successful. So it's all a body of work, Jamal. Starts in the offseason, starts picks up in the preseason and then throughout the season you're always headed towards playoff uh, position and once you get in the playoffs anything can happen but you have to be encouraged at the uh, play of Chima Ekobar who is so uh, consistent in his production but he really is is a leader for this Baruch team and everybody feeds off um, his greatness 
But tonight also you had uh, Paige who really chipped in in a big way. Definitely Paige talking about chipping in with a big way. 18 points on the, on the day for Bryla Page. And a keckle bar with the monster game. 27 points and 13 rebounds. So between those two players, uh, adds up to a lot. Coach Alisi going to the bench now. And uh, he's got our uh, Grossman, who's our uh, visitor from Australia. Right. Has shown some good post moves in uh, limited action. And he could be somebody Coach Alisi can count on down the road. And Michael Rich is also checking in there. But a great applause from the crowd here and the players for seniors Chima Akekoba and Dwayne Brighty. Well, let's, let's not forget that the uh, first and foremost today was senior day for the women Bearcats and, and also for the men Bearcats. So family and friends in the stands, everybody's got to be happy. Uh, again, we talked about the memories that will be everlasting from games like this. And uh, 10 years down the road, uh, when you're walking down Fifth Avenue, all these memories come back to you, and they lead to reunions, and uh, especially the great alumni event here at Baruch. Everybody comes together, and you talk about days like this. Definitely days like this will be rememberable for both teams as the Baruch Lady Bearcats win earlier in the game, earlier in the day, and... The men Bearcats are going to walk out of here victorious as we have a travel call on Justin Sutton. He's definitely frustrated the way, with the way this game has went. It's only fitting, Jamal, that Coach Ray Rankis is uh, here with us today. He's in the stands. Uh, my goodness, did he set the ball high for Baruch basketball. Won a ton of games, but uh, won it with the utmost class, and he's a friend to all. And uh, he's a mentor, he's a teacher, and um, shout out to him because he really set the bar very high here for Baruch basketball and Baruch athletics. Definitely has. Great, big shout out to Coach Ray Rankis. And with the sound of that buzzer, your final score, 74-53 on senior day, the Baruch Bearcats are victorious. Well, you have to look, Jamal, at Chim Akabar, who delivered in a huge way. Shout out to the seniors uh, who got a victory on their day. Shout out to Bryla Page, who really contributed and was an incredible one-two punch with Akabar. Of course, we didn't really need William Sixsmith today uh, to do what he does, but, you know, he made some shots uh, Gibbs contributed too with, with really good guard play. Let's face it, the guard play ignites the whole Baruch attack. Uh, Alan Villar came in and gave Coach Alisi some big minutes uh, for post play. And, um, you know, he's somebody to look forward to having here for a couple more years. Andre Harris didn't have to really do a lot today. He's such a versatile player because uh, of the play of Page. And Echo Bar, uh, some of the other contributions were not needed. But that's the sign of a really good team when you can count on uh, players A, B, C, D, E, F, or, or G. And that's what Baruch has. They have a deep, deep bench. And uh, anything can happen from here on in, Jamal. Uh, irregardless of the seedings, when you throw the ball up, um, if you're bringing it that day, you can emerge victorious. And Coach Alisi has uh, won some championships here, so he knows the formula. He's been there. And uh, the stage is set for some really great basketball up ahead. No, definitely the stage is definitely set for some great basketball ahead. As you know, you have two seniors leaving today, but that's a deep roster that Coach Alisi has at his disposal going forward to years to come. But a little stats in, today, in today's game. A keckle ball with the monster game. 27 points and 13 rebounds. Bryla Page with 18 points and two assists. William Sixsmith, you know, three three-pointers, 11 points, two assists, three steals. But Andre Harris with seven points, five boards, and two assists. But Anthony Gibbs, four points and ten assists. And after that, Alan Villar, 
Six points and two rebounds. So just to point out, uh, Chima Echabar's uh, little spurt in the second half, I think, really set the tone on any possible comeback by Medgarevis. He kind of took it in his own hands, and he pushed Baruch back into the driver's seat. So that, that's a, a little bit of a note. Once that occurred, Baruch was, was okay. Uh, boy, you know, uh, Justin Sutton tried his best uh, to bring back Medgarevis, Suave, uh, his 20-point average. Uh, he didn't hit that today, but, you know, he was playing hard. And uh, some of the post players that Brian Nigro has, uh, you know, they might be able to be some, uh, you know, players to be heard from uh, in CUNY down the road. But if you're Coach Nigro, uh, you, you look at some of the good things that uh, you've done this season. I think they have one more win in conference that they had last season. This is his first year as head coach of Medgar Evers. He's had some great wins. He beat NYU. He beat uh, Old Westbury. He's beaten Baruch. So Brian Nigro comes over to Medgar Evers and already has uh, done some things. And uh, we look for him to be, uh, you know, a, a uh, create a quality program at Medgar Evers. Here at Baruch, boy, we see a lot of great basketball. And uh, it's only going to get better. No, it's definitely going to get better. But one couple key factors for the Baruch Bearcats today, 13 turnovers causing 23 turnovers for Megan Evers and getting 25 point, points off of turnovers. But more, most importantly, with this win tonight and the Staten Island loss earlier in the day, the Brook Bearcats have to win the next game. And if they win the next game, they'll put themselves into the second seed in the CUNYAC Conference, and that'll be a great accomplishment for this team this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, great accomplishment. You know, you're rewarded for hard work. You're rewarded for winning when you have to. And, uh, you know, again, I look for Baruch, irregardless of where they finish, to be a force to be reckoned with because they have a deep bench, they're well coached, and uh, they have a preseason All-American. So everything is in line, Jamal, for an exciting next couple of weeks in CUNYAC basketball. Definitely uh, next couple of great weeks for CUNYAC basketball. But most importantly, what a great day for Baruch. First, the Lady Bearcats winning 70-33 to over the Lady Cougars. And the men coming in winning 74-53 to over the Bearcat, over the Cougars. Excuse me. For Joe Stolzer, I am Jamal Chapman. Have a good night, New York.